So today we said we were going to be covering general solution. Now general solution is about solving for an equation at a particular point, right? So when we solve for sine, um, it's always K360 because 360 degrees is how long it takes the sine graph to complete itself. Cos also takes 360 degrees, it, the period is 360, so that's also K360. Some of you might use N360, that's also fine. Um, and then we have the tan graph, and the tan graph, the period is 180 degrees, so that's K180. Okay, that's just the general introduction. Okay, so say I say to you that you need to work out the sine of A. What you're going to do on your calculator, you are going to type in shift sign and then 0, 0,5. And you'll see that that gives you a reference angle of 30 degrees. So the question you ask yourself is, where is sign positive? Because if we look at this here, this is positive. So sign is positive in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant. So with a reference angle of 30 degrees, we're going to say for quadrant 1, it's going to be 30 degrees plus K360 degrees. And for the second quadrant, it's going to be 180 minus because that's how we refer to this quadrant. We refer to this quadrant as 180 minus and then whatever your reference angle is, which in this case is 30. So it's going to be 180 minus 30 plus K360 um, and that will give us 150 plus K360, okay? Um, I'll give you guys a chance later to write it down. For now, um, I'm not sure if you want to screenshot this before we go on to the next page. I'll give you a second. Okay, so let's look at the next example. We have cos of 2x is equal to negative 0,5. Okay, cos of negative 1 is equal to 60, that's your reference angle. So now, what we are going to say is, it's cos of 2x. What are we going to do with that information? We're going to say, where is cos, in this case, positive or negative? It is negative. That's a minus. So where is cos negative? In the second and third quadrant. How do we refer to this quadrant? This quadrant is 180 minus 60. Third quadrant is 180 plus whatever the reference angle is. So we've got 180 minus 60 plus K360. Okay, what does that give, it, give us? It gives us 120 plus K360. But can you see here, we've got 2X. So we need to solve for X. That means that we need to divide by 2 on both sides. So that's going to be 120 divided by 2 and 360 divided by 2, that will give us 60 plus K180, and so X will be equal to 60 plus K180, and in quadrant 3, it's going to be 180 plus 60, which is 240, and we need to divide by 2 again on both sides to solve for X, and that will give you X is equal to 120 plus K times 180. Okay, so just to catch up, why are we doing quadrant 2 and quadrant 3? Okay, when we do general solution, we have to look at this value and see whether it's positive or negative. So if it is, in this case, it's negative, we need to go back to the cost diagram, okay, and check where cos is negative. It's negative in the second quadrant, it's negative in the third quadrant. Okay, so that's why you see quadrant 2 and you see quadrant 3. Now what we're going to do is, we said cos x is equal to negative 0, 0,5. You worked out your reference angle. And now we're going to say cos of 2x um, is equal to 180 minus 60 plus K360. And then what you do is follow your processes from there. I don't want you guys to get confused as to why, we've, why we're working with different quadrants all the time. We've got to choose our quadrant based on where our value is positive or negative. This value here, so it's negative 0, 0, 5, where it's positive or negative, and that will determine your quadrants. We have to use that value as a determinant. So, I want to move on to the next example quickly. Okay, now, this is where the rubber meets the road for you guys. We're going to look at this and we're going to say, okay, 
we need to find the general solution, but then we're also finding specific solutions, right? The specific solution is where we find, we solve for x in a particular interval, okay? So we're going to look at cos of 2x plus 10 is equal to a half. The first thing we need to do is find the general solution. So if you find the general solution, we've got cos of 2x plus 10 is equal to a half and our reference angle is equal to 60 degrees. Now we go back to our cos diagram. Where is it positive? It's positive. We said it's quadrant 1 and it should be quadrant 4. Cos is positive in the first and the fourth quadrant. So we look at quadrant 1 and we see we've got 2x plus 10 is equal to 60 plus k360. And what do we need to do? We need to solve for that. So we say 60 minus 10, just like an equation. And then we're going to say 2x is equal to 50 plus k360. Again, we need to solve for x. We don't need to solve for 2x. So what do we need to do? We need to divide by 2 on both sides. So x is going to be equal to 25 plus k180. And then on the in the fourth quadrant, we've got 2x plus 10 is equal to 360 minus 60. Why 360 minus 60? Because this is how we reference that fourth quadrant, 360 minus whatever your reference angle is. And then we're going to subtract the 10 as well and that will give us 290 plus k360. We need to divide by 2 on both sides and when we divide by 2 that's going to give us x is equal to 145 plus k times 180. Okay, so just remember that, that 360 needs to be divided by 2 as well. Now, we need to solve for the specific interval. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to do this one, and I'm, I've done the first one, 25 plus k times 180. What I want you to do is you're going to do the 145 plus k times 180. Okay, but let's first go through the first one. What are we doing? When we solve for something in a specific interval, and in this case, the interval is minus 180 to 180, we are going to use the values generally. We use naught, negative 1, and 1. Okay? The reason we've gone to negative 2 is because this year, remember it was 360, the period, but it was divided by 2. So we're going to use negative 2 as well. Okay? So, what we're going to do is the first number that I substitute for k is 0. And 25 plus 0 times 180 is equal to 25. Okay? Then we substitute 1 for k. So, it's going to be 25 plus 1 times 180. That will give me 205. Then we substitute negative 1, which is 25 plus negative 1 times 180. And that gives me negative 155. And then... We've got substituting k is equal to negative 2, 25 plus negative 2 times 180, and that gives me negative 335, okay? So, what are we doing now? We need to then ask ourselves the question, how are we going to do the same thing for 145? But before we do that, let's first determine of the ones we've done now, which of them fall within this does that lie between negative 180 and 180? Yes. So that's going to be included as a possible solution. Does this lie between negative 180 and 180? No. So that cannot be included as a possible solution. Does this lie between negative 180 and 180? Yes, it does. So it's a possible solution. And does this lie within our negative 180 and 180? No, so that cannot be included in a, as a solution. Okay, so what I want you guys to do for me quickly is I want you to look at this here, okay? And I want you to do exactly the same thing for me quickly that I've done here. Substitute your K values and solve for that because that this year is this part of the sum, the quadrant 4. We've only solved for quadrant 1. We still need to solve for quadrant 4. So can you guys do that for me quickly? Okay guys, so I want you to check your solutions against mine. So, now let's look at that quickly. 
we've got x is equal to 145 plus k times 180 and what we did was we substituted 0 which is what we did there we got an answer of 145 we substituted 1 we got 325 we substituted um, negative 1 and we got negative 35 and we substituted negative 2 and we got negative 215 okay hopefully you guys got that same solution